So is AI making us smarter or lazier? You tell me. Those are the only two options, apparently. So we now have AI writing emails. Not only that, but we actually have AI summarizing emails. So you can use AI to write an email, and then the other person can use AI to summarize the email, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, making art, that was a joke, and even coding. It's not even just even coding. I feel like wasn't coding like the first decent use case, really? Uh, I remember pretty much the day ChatGPT dropped, I sort of got it to create a project for me using Django, and I was pretty, my mind was blown back then. Uh, some say it's freeing us up for higher level thinking. This is somewhat true to a point. Uh, while other, like if you could just like magically dictate an AI to build you exactly what you want, then I think that would be true. But right now there's still lots of bugs and stuff. Uh, but I do think it's true to a point. Uh, like you can, if you're like making a game, you can just focus on the game rather than implementing every single tiny little feature. So I do think that is true to a certain point. Uh, but it does get to a point where like things just get a bit of a mess. Uh, so while others argue it's making us too dependent, what do you think? Uh, does AI make us sharper or duller in the long run? I do feel like there's a rise of young people who are completely, it feels like, dependent on it. And it, I almost can't blame them. The tool is there. You're going to just be tempted to use it um, rather than wasting your time, in quotation marks, um, trying to like fully understand it. It only makes me smarter as I've always been lazy. That's a fair point. You know, I don't know if I'm lazy or not. I think I'm sometimes lazy. Uh, but I think it's always been more that I'm not lazy. It's just that I struggle to do things I'm not interested in. So if I'm not interested in it, I just won't do it, which is why I never did homework at school, which I don't recommend. But uh, yeah, it only makes me smarter. And as always, cop out answer, but it depends. By the way, if you like to see me rambling about stuff, especially Reddit threads, don't forget to subscribe. Leave a like, please. Uh, so it's changing your synapses. Human brain tends to automate tasks. Dump information when working with AI. We dedicate lots of work. It's not that you're no longer thinking. You think on different um, parts of the task. This, I mean, despite the spelling being poor, I think. I think they're definitely onto something here. It will change the way you think, I imagine, because you're now no longer worrying about the details. But you're thinking about um, other parts, sort of stitching pieces of code together, perhaps. Um, and yeah, also your, your brain, if you don't use it, you lose it you know that is a famous quote i think and that's how your brain pretty much works you know uh, if you don't use something you'll lose it so by using ai you probably will forget how to code or specific parts of code but you know that might be okay uh, i'm obviously going to keep bringing this back to coding because that is what i do and i am not very you know versed on other use cases really i don't know anything about marketing for example the issue is that in order to use AI effectively, we need to place a bit of inherent trust in the responses. I would say I trust ChatGPT responses enough to use them, but not to sort of, you wouldn't cite it, firstly. You'd like, it, I, like I find it's fine for code. I'm willing to like give it a bash and trust it for a pe like an implementation of code. But I wouldn't use it for something that needs to be guaranteed to be like accurate information, for example. Um, to constantly fact check and doubt the responses would render the entire concept meaningless. Yeah, and this actually, you actually run into the problem there of like, what is the truth? Because people can just write whatever they want on Reddit or on the internet in general. And it's like, how, I don't know how they actually train that. I wonder if they just try and find as many sort of, I guess it's a confidence thing. Like someone may say something on the internet and ChatGPT is trained on that, but it might see 10, 20 or, you know, you know, maybe it has thousands of sources that say otherwise, and then it is sort of done on a waiting, probably. Um, and when we as populists get accustomed to finding the model trustworthy, the model could easily uh, be tuned and pivoted into biased or even false information. We've already seen pivots, haven't we, in the, the fine tuning. They're always fine tuning, chat GPT, uh, weighing different things. That's why if you watch my recent video, you know, we talked about how the way chat GPT speaks now is even more cringe than before. So go watch that. Uh, these adjustments would act much like algorithms, social media apps, and slowly radicalizing each group until the group's no longer finding any common ground. This is probably true. This is why everyone, I think, was quite mad at ChatGPT essentially becoming the sycophant that just agrees with everything you say. I know that's pretty much the, that's the definition. Uh, it's definitely a problem because, you know, let's say you're right-leaning or left-leaning or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But whatever your views are on any particular issue... ChatGPT will probably just keep reinforcing those views. 
And we're already living in an age of echo chambers, really. It's not pure science fiction to imagine a future where civilizations are not defined by borders or race, but the AI model in which the citizens adhere to. Quite interesting. I feel like that would be a good film. Uh, same, I think it's the change when Google web search in general became so prevalent. You used to go to the library to find information, but now the process of visiting the library is completed for you. Uh, we still have a local library, actually. People complained about how that quickly web searching everything made us lazier as well. This is definitely true. Uh, when it all does is remove unnecessary steps. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I know that this is a boring answer, but whether you're lazy or not has nothing to do with ChatGPT or, you know, LLM models, whatever you want to call them. Uh, obviously, ChatGPT is one specific thing. Um, if you're lazy, you're lazy. Maybe it makes it easier for you to be lazy. Sure. But, you know, I don't think that has anything specifically to do with AI. That's just a you problem. Uh, but I do use it in my work. I went into a problem that I'm unable to solve without help. Last year, I would have made 20 different web searches for specific information and extrapolated what I needed. True. I mean, I think for a lot of people here, I mean, let me know in the comments. LLMs are now the first port of call, not Google. Uh, although I do think the Google AI search thing has improved drastically. I use it quite a lot. I know when it was rolled out, it was really bad and there were a lot of memes. Um, but to be honest, I use that quite a lot now. Uh, it's a good way of quickly finding the information you need and it's just summarized at the top. Uh, so I have started using Google a bit more again, time to time. Uh, now I can feed AI 20 different ideas in one messy paragraph and let it extrapolate something from it to true. Yeah, and it's quite good. You don't even really have to even be coherent, which maybe again is another issue of uh, making you dumber. Like it can sort of understand what you want it to do without even articulating what it is you want very well. Uh, that's how I use it so far. It just made me noticeably at creating terms for web searches. True. It was web search, you know, Google search used to be a skill uh, because you used to get like, you know, back then it was the boomers like writing big, long Google queries, whereas younger people, you know, you would just, if you, if you were savvy with the internet, you would just do like the two or three keywords that you needed rather than a whole sentence. And it's funny because now we've gone like the other way. Now you can go back to like writing, you know, English or whatever your native language is in a natural language form and getting information. So we've sort of gone back to that. So the bright side is in exchange for that loss of ability, I instead have a smart little robot friend that only, not only does all of the searches, web searches, but condenses that information for me in a digestible way. True. Uh, the two aren't mutually exclusive. True. Though neither are likely to be fully independent either. The more I think about it, the more plausible relations seem possible. Well, the thing is, it's like you're, you will always do, well, not always, unless you're going out of your way, but like generally speaking, you'll choose the path of least resistance, right? If, you, if someone wants you to do something and it's about the output, rather than the activity, i.e. like you want to get something done rather than learn about how to do the said thing, you're going to choose the path of least resistance that gets your results quickest. Uh, and yeah, that's just how it is. Uh, I'd say AI is both a ladder and a crutch. It depends on how you use it. True, like most technology, it's neutral, you know? Take calculators, they didn't make us stupid. <laughs> they freed us from long divisions so we could focus on calculus. But if a student uses a calculator before learning basic math, in short circuits their understanding. Same with AI. Yeah, and I think I have spoken to people who are sort of recruiting people out of uni or, you know, just young people, interns, whatever. And they are struggling to find, like, they will be able to do the coding challenges at home, but not with them. And obviously it's because they're using AI. And recruiters are having to, like, see AI outputs now from companies directly just to see, make sure you're not using AI. But then again, it like sort of, that's a tricky one as well, because it's like, what is it you want them to do? Do you want them to be smart? Like, obviously, but that's not like the key thing. You want them to be productive. And if using an AI tool makes them productive, it's probably not an issue. Uh, it's difficult. I do think all companies are basically having to rethink about what it is they want from people. Um, because the old way of like, can they code is almost irrelevant. Like, how much actual coding knowledge do they have in their brain? Feels a bit relevant. The skill set has shifted, that's for sure. Because the reality is, if you have a clone of a person, you have two people, exactly the same person. One gets to use AI, the other one doesn't. Um, the one using the AI is going to get way more done, I think, without a doubt. <clears throat> but you still want the smartest, best candidate, obviously. And as far as coding, I always think of telephone operators who used to have, have to manually uh, patch your call through back in the 50s, maybe. Sounds about right. 
I see coding going the same route, or at least shrinking to a very specialized niche. The current programmers will still be ahead of the curve for another five years, I imagine. But after that, things are going to drastically change. I mean, why learn SQL? You can just prompt an AI. Yeah, and specifically, actually, it's interesting they mention SQL because I think it's something like that where you have a very specific desired output where AI is really good. I don't think I would ever need to know an ever SQL prompt ever again because, like, I think that's the exact type of thing. You just paste the structure of your table and what it is that you want or tables and then ask your LLM the data you want and they'll produce an SQL query for you. Um, I really like that. Anything which is specific, basically, anything which is just like, here are my inputs, here's my desired output, and then, you know, your LLM will just match some code to get the desired output from the input. That's where I think AI is really, really good. People who use it to get smarter will, and people who use it to be lazy will. There you go. They're not wrong. That's a great question, and answer is likely a bit of both, and potentially neither, depending on how you look at it. Here's a breakdown of the arguments. Great. Is this? This is AI generated. Oh, it was a tongue-in-cheek joke. I kind of thought it was. We're not reading all of that. Depends what you use it for. Helping me build a power app where I've built a knowledge I don't have before. Surely that's made me smarter. Well, not really. It's like intelligence versus knowledge versus productivity. You know, they're all different. It has made knowledge... Yeah, what it's done is basically make knowledge really easily accessible. But, like, even more so. Because, like, that's the thing with Google. You know, Google was there before all the knowledge was there, but it wasn't always able to sort of apply. You kind of still had to extrapolate knowledge and how it uh, applied to your specific problem, right? The difference with ChatGPT now is it extrapolates the application of the knowledge as well as giving you the knowledge. Um, so it's just better than Google in that sense. You know, yeah. Use it to verify code syntax instead of more efficient for sure, saves so much time. I use it as a tool, much like I use Excel. Yes and no, depends on the person. Lazy people gonna get lazier, both lazier. Instead of doing the work to learn something, we can now get the cliff's notes in seconds. Dumber and lazier. I do think there is a risk of becoming dumber because I feel like people already don't really like to think. I like to call LLMs, they're like the short form content. They're like the TikTok of coding, right? I do think, oh, like, I did, they, they, there's nothing about it that inherently makes you dumber. But if you do it as, like, an average, people will be thinking less. And if you have to think less, you're probably going to get dumber. <clears throat> but again, this depends on the person. Um, I don't know if I articulated that well, but yeah. Also, wasn't there a sort of study, didn't Microsoft? Someone, someone did a AI is making us dumber study, although I might use Google for this. AI is making us dumber, shocker. This was February 2025. A study, I thought it was by Microsoft, you know. I almost said that. Uh, suggests that reliance on AI tools in the workplace may negatively impact our core thinking skills. The study found that while AI can improve efficiency, it can also lead to a decrease in cognitive effort. I also, I don't know about you guys, but when I don't feel sort of cognitively engaged, I feel more tired anyway, and then you're like being less productive. Uh, the study surveyed knowledge workers found a correlation between increased AI usage and decline in critical thinking skills. Fair enough. It honestly doesn't surprise me. Does reading make you smarter or stupider? Depends how you read, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> Although, I would say you could... It probably makes you smarter regardless. I think if everyone in the world... Take any person, regardless of what they're reading. I don't care if they're reading crap, because we're not talking about knowledge. We're just talking about reading. I think if you make any person on the planet read way more books than they usually would, I think they would get smarter. Of course, that's just an opinion. I can't prove that. Uh, but I would be willing to bet that's the case. Uh, if you read Facebook posts in the comments section on tabloid websites, reading is probably making you stupider. <laughs> Again, yeah, no, yeah, knowledge versus intelligence. If you read classic novels, reputable newspapers, and research journals, it probably makes you smarter. I do sort of agree with the point they're making, but AI allows you to become more mediocre faster. What I think AI has done is it's raised the floor of what people can do. Um, has it raised the ceiling? Probably not, really. But definitely it's raised the floor. Like, anyone can now get more done than they could before. But that doesn't necessarily... It... Also, this is such a difficult thing, because it's like... There was another article I wanted to do, actually, maybe in another video, but basically talking about how AI is affecting productivity. But the problem is there's so many more factors just than, than just the AI itself that it's difficult to sort of determine things like that. 
Uh, anyway, I feel like that's another video. I don't really want to get into that. But the main point of that is that just because you can do more doesn't mean you will do more because, you know, we're not really in a culture where people just get paid more So uh, for doing more work. So there's not really an incentive for the average person at work to um, get loads more done. Um, AI was created with the end goal of dependency or more accurately, symbiosis. Both. is producing really lazy junior programs that can't even code. I don't even think this is hyperbole. I think this is happening. I've heard this from people uh, who've been in this industry for years and years and years, and they're struggling to find junior programmers who actually know what they're talking about. Lazier and therefore ultimately less intelligent it has become one of the greatest medium long-term dangers of our civilization. It's a culture problem as always, isn't it? It's, it's nothing to do. AI is a mutual tool. So it's the culture of the people and like the incentives of the society. Like why... It's because people, like, why are people stupid? Because they just want to, you know, they're incentivized to just get as much done as quickly as possible rather than to actually get more intelligent. These are not mutually exclusive things. Laziness is what often motivates positive change. Our car's making us more healthy. <laughs> Depends. I feel it can do both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I use AI unlocked NVIDIA 50 series GPUs, making them 36% faster. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> if you like to do something, do it yourself. If you don't like to do something, find a way to do it through AI. That's a pretty, that's probably a pretty uh, uh, good tip. Personally, it's making me more productive. Yes, I would say it's making me more productive. But I think I very much care about my ability to think. So I don't just let my brain rot, if you will, because I don't like how I feel. So it's more, I don't like how I feel when I can't focus, when I can't concentrate. And I think it's like when you watch too much TV or whatever, and then you feel like you can't concentrate. That's why I feel like AI is like sometimes you're not really solving puzzles and you're not really concentrating at times because you don't have to i can just copy and paste my entire code base especially if it's just some crap i'm working on one in one file i can just copy that one file and get it to do it upon that uh which i have done that's i guess what people call vibe coding it's basically not thinking that's what vibe coding is i would say ask people who lean heavily on ai to make art music what their favorite art and music is their answer will always tell you something you need to know about the intelligence and work ethic probably making me dumber i can't express myself without it yeah that's bad but again this this is not wanting to think it's like people have this cloud in their brain now where they just cannot it's like a panic like why would i i can't they like oh chat gpt whatever can articulate what i want to say better than i can but then the problem with that is if you will never get better at it because everything you do is a skill. Anyway, I guess we'll end it there. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Leave a like, subscribe. And yeah, thanks for watching.